Blessings, everyone. Welcome back to Rising Ground Church. My name is LaShondra, and we're going to be entering a three-part little mini-series all about surrendering your emotions over to God. The Lord has placed this on my heart several months ago, and now's the time to talk about it. I've noticed that so many believers get too caught up in their emotions, thus allowing their emotions to have more control over their lives than God. So we want to talk about that. Um, today is part one, and we're going to be talking about identifying your emotions and recognizing if they have a hold on you. So if you feel like that this message will be helpful for you, then stay tuned. So one of the ways that we want to start is by recognizing if that's if this is something that you struggle with is seeing when you are in a situation and you sense your emotions are they at the forefront of your decision making i've noticed this for myself many times if you're in a heated situation or a stressful moment are you allowing your emotions to dictate you more than the Holy Spirit? Are you leaning into your emotions more than you're leaning into God? And that's going to be critical to how you really operate in this life to the fullest of the capacity that the Lord has created you to. If you are constantly letting your emotions be at the forefront of your mind, the forefront of your decision making, then you're not allowing the Holy Spirit complete and total control of every part of your life. I remember years ago, the Lord was telling me, <laughs> and it was very specifically, he said, compartmentalize, that I was compartmentalizing everything and that I was having. So that just means that I was having it in all of these little sections and chunks in my mind and in my thinking, in my um, even rationale. And that in that, I also was not allowing God access to those parts. So it was as if, okay, God, I'll, I'll give you this little piece in this little section because of my emotions, but I wasn't allowing him full and total control. And it wasn't until I was able to recognize it, identify that, that then I was able to start to dismantle that thing and allow the Holy Spirit to have full and total control because obviously that's not something that I was aware of. So the Lord was making me aware of it so that I could start to move forward from it. So I pray that you're able to recognize, identify, and then move on. So, do you let your emotions be a guide or a ruler or a dictator? Are you allowing your emotions, whether it's sadness, whether it's happiness, whether it's disappointment, whatever the spectrum that it may fall on, whether you think that it's a positive thing or a negative thing, are you allowing that to be the ruler over you? Again, you have to be aware of it so that then you can start to change it and recognize it and allow God to help you to change it. This is another way that you can tell if you're allowing those emotions to really rule over you. How often do you fall into a slump or burst of anger or even a depression when things don't work out for you the way you thought that they would or the way that you wanted them to. Now, this can show up in many different forms. If a situation doesn't go the way that you have prayed for, if something doesn't happen the way that you just knew God was going to come through, like you just knew, okay, God is going to help me with this and this is how it's going to happen. I'm going to get this job and, and everything is going to go well in my life. And then all of a sudden, it doesn't happen that way. Do you allow that situation to then uh, cause your emotions to rule over you and then put you into a slump? Whether that's a slump of depression, whether it's a slump of defeat, whether it's a slump of um, even just feeling disappointed in God, you have to recognize it. Now, that doesn't mean that these emotions won't come up. We're not saying that at all. The Lord understands that. You know, that's why he says that you can be angry, but to sin not. So in that, and I'll reference that scripture several times during this series, because in that the Lord is saying, yes, emotions are going to come. Anger is going to come. Sadness is going to come. Disappointment is going to come. But the key is, see, the, the other portion of that is, but to sin not. So in essence, the Lord is saying, are you allowing that thing to have rulership or dictatorship over your life? 
you have to learn when to, okay, I'm not gonna let this emotion take complete and total control over me, no. All of me, including my emotions, belong to God. Now, these things don't have to be a stronghold over you per se. Some of these are strongholds over people though. When, when it's a constant fight, a constant battle, a constant um, feeling of disappointment, a constant anger, a constant lashing out even. Because when things don't go your way and you start to lash out on other people or other things, then you know that it has become a stronghold over you. Now, this is the wonderful thing about God. When he lets you to become aware, identifying these things, which is what we said at the very beginning, that's what this one is about, uh, then you can start to, again, surrender it over to God. You're surrendering your, your emotions over to God. So these things don't have to stay a stronghold. The anointing of God can break every yoke. So even that includes emotions, it includes depression, it includes rage. Some people have a stronghold of rage. You know, a, a lot of times it's it's used as a joke talking about um, uh, road rage and, you know, people lashing out at people on the road. But there's something else deeper in that. Now, everybody's going to have their little moments of, you know, this person got on my nerves or the way they drove was crazy to you or whatever. But if it's a constant issue, if it's something that you are constantly dealing with, then that would be considered something that you have allowed to have a dictatorship over your life. And we say allow because it's not something that has to be there consistently. It doesn't have to remain there. The Lord is able to remove and to break everything. So again, identifying and then releasing it is going to be key to that. Now, the um, this is also important. Again, I want to address, are emotions a bad thing? Absolutely not. God has given us all of these things. He's given us emotions. He's given us the emotion of joy. He's given us the emotion of happiness. He's even given us these emotions of sadness. But the thing is, how are we dealing with them? How do we allow uh, do we allow them to take control over us or do we have control over them? Reminder, emotions are, I'm sure many of you have heard this term before, emotions are energy in motion, energy in motion. So that's why at times they can feel so strong. That's why you can have an emotional moment. And even some people will say, oh, I had an emotional breakdown at that moment because God has created us as spirit. We're created in his image and his likeness, right? So that means that there are also other things that are connected with us and to us that, are, that we can't see with our natural eyes. And emotions are one of those things. And because it is, if you think, of the way an emotion comes upon you. Sometimes you even hear people say, all of a sudden I had a wave of fear washed over me, or even I had a wave of joy or excitement came into my life. That's expressing and it's really identifying that emotion that all of a sudden came and rushed in. And that's why at times it can feel as if it's more powerful than you are. But God says, no, that you have the authority. He has given you the authority as a believer. And once you accept Jesus Christ, then you have the authority even over your emotions. We've given our emotions too much power, too much power, which then go back to the beginning where we said it starts to dictate our judgment and our reasoning. And that is not the place that the Lord wants you to be in. Now, another way of identifying those emotions is by evaluating your thoughts. So pay attention. What kind of thoughts come alongside of the emotion that you're feeling in that moment? You may feel a certain way, but then your thoughts are going to, to come right there with it. 
Now, sometimes that can work both ways. You have the thought and then an emotion will come along with it. And I pray that you all are receiving this. I pray that you're that you're really paying attention to what the Holy Spirit is revealing to you right now because this can literally change your life. It can even help you to get to that place that you've been praying about because sometimes we don't realize that you're blocking your own prayers by your emotions, by the thoughts that come alongside of those emotions because there's a whole lot of power that's right there with it. When you think of an emotion that you have and you think that it's carrying another thought or the thought is carrying an emotion alongside with it, then you have to pay attention so then you can start to break that cycle. So then you can start to break that thought pattern because if you're constantly thinking nothing, nothing ever works out for me. If you're constantly thinking, oh, um, I, I fail at everything that I do that is going to bring alongside of it an emotion of defeat or an emotion of despair. And then that can start to dictate your decisions. And then you can start to doubt God more because your emphasis is more on your feelings and your emotions versus the power of God and the authority that he has given you as a believer. Now, this is very key and helpful and recognizing that these things can change. These can change, but you have to pay attention so that you can start to switch those gears when it's necessary, when it's necessary for it to come. Now, remember that always these emotions are tied to a thought or the thought is tied to an emotion. It works both ways but you're able to get out of it. God has given you the route. He's always, you know, the word says that he's always given us a way to escape. He gives you a way to escape by recognizing it, by paying attention. Sometimes you mindlessly think, we all do it, I do it. We just think, we just go. Our minds, our, 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 our minds are going one way and then next thing you know, you thought about something for an hour straight. One time I did that, like I paid attention to what I was thinking of. And I was like, oh wow, I really just paid attention to this thing for a whole hour. Now, how different would that have been if I had been thinking of God for that whole hour? How different would it have been if I had been thinking of, of the goodness of the Lord and how he can come through and how powerful God is versus my problem or worry or the situation that I was in. So paying attention to these thoughts can help you change and redirect them. Now, as people, we're taught to be aware. We're taught to be more aware of the situation than we are of the thoughts, the feelings, and our belief systems behind a thing. And so now God is saying, look, you can't keep going through life mindlessly. You can't keep going through life asleep. You can't keep going through your life with just not paying attention to what you're thinking about because these habits produce results and these re results can start to shift your whole life, whether that be negative or positive. So you have to pay attention to these things. So um, I'm going to stop there for today. But again, pay attention because we're going to have two more sessions with this. Um, I believe that it's just very important that we get this and understand our emotions and understand that you have to surrender your emotions over to God, everything over to the Lord. So I pray that this word is helpful for you guys. And I pray that you take this teaching and that you apply it and that you share it with someone else. If you know that this could help someone else in their life, don't be afraid to share it with them and just leave it there. You don't gotta say too much, just leave it there and let the Lord do the, um, do the illumination, bring the illumination to that person. So I love you guys so much. Have a blessed day in the Lord. And I will see you for part two next time.